वेलकम दिस इज द मॉड्यूल सिक्स दैट इज द वीक सेवन एंड लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी एंड आई डिस्कस अबाउट द कैनेटिक्स ऑफ स्लैग मेटल रिएक्शन दैन द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट विल बी कवर्ड हियर दिस इज द वेरियस रेट काउंटलिंग स्टेप रिगार्डिंग द स्लैग मेटल मास ट्रांसफर एंड दैन विल कंट्रोल अबाउट टॉक्ट अबाउट द मिक्स ट्रांसपोर्ट कंट्रोल सिस्टम एंड सम ऑफ द मास ट्रांसफर मॉडल्स ना कैनेटिक्स ऑफ स्लैग मेटल रिएक्शन and in this case you can see in this chart i have uh, given the concentration profile for different control system there is the if it is mass uh, there is a metal phase mass transfer control then this is the concentration profile and if it is slag phase mass transfer control like this so if you consider the metal phase mass transfer control that means the mass transfer from the bulk of the metal phase to the interface is the rate controlling okay so in that case you can see the major resistance lies here only there is a concentration gradient across the concentration boundary layer on the metal side and chemical reaction at the surface is called very fast so it has attained there is the complete partitioning of the impurity has taken place of the interface and this is the concentration on the slag side csi at the interface and cmi is the concentration uh, of the metal at the interface on metal side okay and csb is the concentration of the impurity in the bulk of the slag and similarly cmb is the concentration of the impurity in the bulk of the metal phase so we can find that is the only resistance lie at the concentration boundary layer on the metal phase so it is a this concentration profile represent the when the system is metal phase mass transfer control similarly if it is slag phase mass transfer control as you can see there is no concentration gradient in the metal phase because the mass transfer on the metal phase is assumed to be very fast also the chemical reaction at the interface is fast such that the complete partitioning of the impurity has taken place at the interface and only resistance you can find on the slag phase from interface to the slag bulk there is a concentration gradient there is the resistance lies here and now a system you can come the c here it is a mixed transport control that is when the mass transfer on the metal side as well as mass transfer on the slag side both control the reaction that is when the these resistances are comparable and the chemical reaction at the interface is fast comparatively and that's why the complete partitioning takes place at the slag metal interface only resistance lie on the metal side must uh, metal side as well as on the slag side concentration boundary layers and last there is a condition d is chemically controlled here you can see mass transport has no role because mass transfer is quite fast compared to that of chemical reaction at the interface that's why the interface has not attained the actual equilibrium you can see the cmi is the metal side impurity concentration and csi is the slag side impurity concentration at the interface and these two in, uh, concentration are not at equilibrium equilibrium concentration lies little here this is the csi equilibrium this is the equilibrium concentration so so you can find that this concentration there is a slag side interface mass transfer this this has not attained this equilibrium concentration yet so this is the thing so here it is called chemically controlled when the surface reaction is the rate controlling step and another is called the mixed control when everything that is the transport on the metal side transport on the slag side as well as chemical reaction at the interface all the resistances are comparable then they are in series and they constitute the total resistance and that is called the mixed transport system now two things one things you have to remember here all the concentration that i have shown it is basically the effective concentration or it is called the activity and as you know the pc is transport down the activity so the activity of metal side is higher than that of the slag side that's why the impurity is transferring from metal to the slag so it is not actually the concentration in fact the concentration actual impurity concentration on the slag side is much higher compared to that of metal side that then under that condition only the impurity transfer this you can have an effective slag metal separation so actual impurity concentration in the slag phase is supposed to be much higher in fact the 
partition coefficient may be of the order of 100 and more than that. That means partition coefficient is called LP is defined as your as you know that is the LP or the partition coefficient you can say uh, LP is equal to your concentration at the interface on the slack side divided by concentration um, metal I. So, since the interface at equilibrium you can write CSI by CMI is equal to LP. Okay. So, this partition coefficient is quite high it is of the order of 100 that means at the interface the concentration on the slack side is much higher compared to that of the metal side concentration. But the activity is different activity is like this this activity on the metal side is higher than that of the slack side. That is why the impurity is transferring downhill the activity, down the activity. Okay. But concentration is different, this is the concentration is high, why it is happening? And then the question is, uh, it happens because the activity coefficient on the slack side is much, much less compared to that of the activity coefficient on the metal side. That is the impurity metal interaction is much less compared to the impurity and the slag interaction that is much higher that is why as soon as the impurity goes on the slack side it acts as a sink almost. So, uh, it get attracted with that thing. So, you know that is the activity, activity is written as activity you can write activity is equal to gamma into your x mole fraction of i. Okay. So, now if x is very less then gamma that is the x is very high gamma is very less so your activity can be that thing. So, this is the relation. So, you can say there is the activity on the metal phase is much higher because your activity coefficient is higher and the activity on the slack side is much lower because the activity coefficient is very, very low, very, very low because the interaction is attractive on the both are attractive but much more attractive on the slack side. So, that basically makes it possible. So, in case if I want to draw the concentration profile it looks like this somewhat like this that is this is and this. This will be the concentration profile if it is the slag and it is the metal side the concentration profile actually is like this and this is all the activity profile and concentration actually impurity transport down the activity not actually the concentration because the activity coefficient also has a role to play. Okay. So, having said that. Now, let us cons consider a mixed control system. Usually, the uh, impurity transfer, slag metal impurity transfer is usually the transport control that is the some kind of either metal side mass transport or here I say the mixed mass transport control because transport control it is mostly the mass transfer control because the temperature is quite high because 1600 degree centigrade. A steel making temperature is 1600 degree centigrade at that temperature chemical reaction activation energy barrier is very low and chemical reaction at the interface is very fast. So, chemical reaction does not pose any problem or as far as the kinetics is concerned and it is the mass transport of the species through the concentration boundary layers on the metal side and the slag side that may control the process. That is why we are now concentrating on the mixed transport control system. So, this is the system that is the CMB it is coming like this here is the one resistance and you can find there is another resistance is there. So, if I want to draw this resistance in series two resistance are there. So, here you have basically CM bulk concentration and you have one resistance here and then you have another resistance both the resistance are in series and then if I write it as CS uh, bulk by LP then this this is the equilibrium concentration cross bonding to CMB. So, you can write that is I will write it as this also you can write it as CMB uh, equilibrium right. CMB equilibrium I can write LP is the partition coefficient. So, this is the metal side bulk concentration okay? and there are two resistance and on the other side is that equilibrium when the how long the reaction will continue as long as that is the that is the CMB does not come down to the equilibrium composition corresponding to the bulk composition at that time. Okay. So, C, uh, CS bulk sorry this is the CS bulk and uh, you can write it as uh, so it is uh, let us take it here. Yeah. 
this is the cs bulk equilibrium no 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 that is that is that's correct okay cm 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 right now what i'm telling is that the cmb equilibrium that is the equilibrium that is corresponding to the bulk composition that is cmb equilibrium is the composition on the metal side that corresponds to the equilibrium composition corresponding to equilibrium composition with the slag valve that is the concentration which will be in equilibrium with the uh, uh, csb right so csb by lp that basically is cmb equilibrium so the reaction will only continue as long as the cmb comes down cmb will time will come down and this is suppose cmb equilibrium so this equilibrium this will be in equilibrium with the cs bulk at that time okay so this composition cmb will come down to equilibrium composition and passing through through resistance are there one is the metal side resistance and the another is the slag side resistance and metal side resistance and slag side resistance are like this you can see we can it can be easily shown so these are the two resistance it will be 1 by km sorry this is your 1 by km this resistance and this is your 1 by lp k of slack so this is the resistance of there so this will be the two resistance and you can do it also that is if you do the two flux you write what is the flux from here and what is the flux going out from here and if you can equate that flux keeping in mind that uh, that is you can write this two flux that is the j and j flux that is what is the flux from the metal side metal slide flux is your km into your cmb minus of cmi and then similarly under steady state slack for uh, that is will also be csi minus csb so this is the two flux and these two flux under steady state will be same so that's why i have written both at the same flux this is the metal side flux that is the through the concentration boundary layer on the metal side this will be the flux and this is the flux on the slag side through the concentration boundary layer and these two flux you you can equate it and also you can write lp lp is equal to csi your by cmi and also you can write it as cs bulk divided by cm bulk that is corresponding to corresponding to this equilibrium concentration corresponding to this then you can write it as lp right so if you this thing and you equate this you will finally end up with this equation and then this equation with an elliptical analogy you can see this way also two resistance are in series so you can write like this and then this is the potential gradient cmb minus cs bulk uh, cs bulk by lp this is basically your equilibrium composition corresponding to equilibrium composition on the metal phase corresponding to the slag phase concentration in the bulk right so so because this reaction will continue till it reaches the equilibrium concentration cmb comes down to the equilibrium composition and this is the two resistance right so and now you can see the case if lp is very high usually the partition coefficient is very high if lp is very high then this term will go to zero so the case when lp is very high lp is very high is the lp is uh, so you can say lp very high high value if you take a very high value then this term will be zero if lp is zero then this equation and lp is zero this term will also be zero so this will be then it will be only the metal side must transfer controlled okay lp is high then the, so lp on the metal side must transfer become the rate controlling step if lp is high you can just zero it and this 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 resistance will also vanish okay this resistance also vanish and these also vanish this also vanish this is also the thing that is vanish this resistance vanish and then it becomes basically metal side must transfer control so this thing will continue in the next slide if you see that um so oh, then the mass balance equation we have brought in that is the you you, you just remove that okay right so in this case if it is the mass transfer control then your equation become like this 
your equation become like this that is your uh, flux that is this flux this term will be 0 then this flux you can write km into cmb cmb minus cs bulk by lp you can this is the equilibrium composition right so you can write like this so this equation will look like this right and then we will go to the next slide where I will this is the flux if it is metal side special case higher partition coefficient metal side mass transfer become the rate controlling step if it is the situation then you can do the this is the flux from the metal side that you can find. So, then it will be flat under that condition metal side mass transfer controlled. So, this is this and this equation also change like this because on the slack side you do not have any resistance because LP is very high as a result the resistance vanishes to 0. Basically as soon as the impurity come at the interface there is a slack access and sink. So, it makes a very strong bond and it goes into the system. So, because basically there is no concentration you can think it as a there is no concentration gradient on the slack side or there is no mass transfer resistance under that condition. So, on that condition now next slide you will see. So, now if I do a mass balance equation that is this is the flux from the metal side metal side mass transfer control and this is the flux that is going. So, the rate of change in metal concentration will be given by this V into dcmb dt that should be equated to the that is the flux into area that is the rate at which the uh, at which the impurity is uh, moving to the slack side right hand side and this is the this is the rate of change of bulk concentration into the volume ok. So, the accumulation negative accumulation is equal to the rate at which the uh, impurity is removing the metal page. So, if you just integrate this then you will get uh, so, if you just integrate it you will get this equation a dimensionless concentration versus time that is you get ln of this is the sister you can say this is equal to k prime of t and then if you just plot it that is you can plot ln of sister versus t it will be a straight line passing through 0 right a straight line and this slope this is called the k prime and this k prime is called the volumetric constant and that is the coefficient ok. So, so, this Km is called the mass transfer coefficient it is defined as centimeter per second and K prime is called the volumetric mass transfer coefficient you can see A by B as a unit of centimeter square centimeter cube. So, centimeter cube centimeter cancel out. So, it has an unit of per second. So, it is a unit of per second. So, you can call is a mass transfer rate constant you can call the mass transfer rate constant or volumetric mass transfer coefficient whatever you say and Km is basically the mass transfer coefficient. Now, think is how to calculate this mass transfer coefficient and there are some models are there I will just discuss about this model because it is the core of this thing. If I know Km then I can calculate the Km prime and I can calculate the evolution of uh, species concentration with time in the metal phase right. So, only thing is that I need to know the mass transfer coefficient and uh, how you can do that thing. Mass transfer coefficient basically gives the conductance of the concentration boundary layer. Higher is the mass transfer coefficient, higher is the mass flux and it depends on what is the hydrodynamic condition on the concentration boundary layer. Uh, if it is stagnant then mass transfer rate will be very less, if it is turbulent mass transfer rate will be very fast. So, let us do that some uh, we have some uh, models I will discuss about those things. First model is called the stagnant film model, stagnant film theory. Here we assume that is the, uh, this is the thing we consider that is the assume all the con actual concentration boundary layer is like this. You can see the surface concentration is gradually decreasing and then there is no change. So, this is called the concentration boundary layer up to which you have a concentration gradient that is called the concentration boundary layer. But in this model what we are considering we are assuming that is the all concentration drop across the boundary layer take place in a stagnant film at the interface of thickness delta. Because at the interface there is a stagnant film is there and we are considering there is the effective that is called the effective concentration boundary layer thickness that is here and we are considering there is all concentration drop from here to here take place like this like a straight line. Straight line when it, it happens if I consider the concentration boundary layer is a stagnant boundary layer ok. So, here we are considering the total resistance 
drop over the stagnant boundary layer. That is the thing. That is the assumption. The stagnant boundary layer or the other. So, it actually does not consider up to this. It considered this concentration here to here drop by a straight line like this, assuming the boundary layer as a stagnant film, right. So, in that condition, you can write this is the expression d dc dx that is the flux from fixed first law, it is the flux and that should be equal to km into dcmv minus dci, that is the cb minus ci. This is the, it is the definition of mass transfer, flux definition of mass transfer coefficient is km into concentration difference, that is the your cb bulk concentration minus the i surface concentration, okay. And that is equal to the stagnant film flux. Stagnant film flux means by, by the fixed first law of diffusion you can define d dc dx is the flux through the stagnant film. So, then you can just uh, expand this term like this and if you can see from here, so that is the d by delta become equivalent to that is the km mass transfer coefficient. So, mass transfer coefficient you can get as the d by delta because d by delta cmb is cmb this is these two equations are equivalent if you can see you can say there is the mass transfer coefficient is this by equating basically this thing. So, km is equal to d by delta where the concentration boundary layer and then delta is the thickness but it is very difficult to calculate this thickness of the stagnant boundary layer concentration if you can do that that is possible. But there is a very simplistic mass transfer model. And most realistic mass transfer model is called the Higbee's penetration theory. And if you consider it is more uh, realistic, because here you can see unlike the solid fluid interface, because if you have a solid and the fluid, that interface, the interface between two fluid are not. There is a solid, when, when you have a solid and then fluid is flowing over it, then the solid film is very stagnant. That is the solid. Uh, the interface you can consider as a stagnant something like that. That is the thing you have a constant solid is there and then concentration boundary layer because it is stagnant. It is and the film will be there that is also stagnant film will be there because it is not moving. Solid layer is stationary and the liquid adjacent to it there will be certain layer that will may be the stagnant beyond that liquid may be moving, but definitely a layer will be there adjacent to the solid that is stagnant, right. But in case to fluid, it is not the case because the interface is very discontinuous. Two fluid cannot be like this. Two fluid may be like this, very discontinuous two fluid. So, there will not be a sharp interface between two fluid and uh, a discontinuous and this fluid has a chance of surface renewal also. And what will happen in this case? Suppose you have one fluid like this, you can consider one fluid, there is a heavier fluid and you can consider a lighter fluid and this fluid can come here and stay for some time. This is the AD, that is the AD of the lighter fluid can come and come in contact with the another fluid, this is another fluid for some time and then it goes back. So, during this process some mass transfer will take place. So, during this transient process you will have some mass transfer process will take place with time this concentration profile may be like this and it will be bigger. Because if I just make it bigger, so like this you have say this is the concentration profile at t is equal to 0 then as t is increasing you can have a concentration profile as t. So, a transient mass transfer will take place, transient mass transfer will take place with time and uh, the concentration in the fluid will develop and after staying for some time it will come out, okay. So, that is the, that is called the uh, Higgs penetration theory, that is, uh, so a fluid element it, AD, that is the AD will come and stay on this film for some time and then go away and during this station, this period, there is the mass transfer will take place with time it is increasing, okay. And this concentration profile will be like this initially like this then growing, growing like this and then it will be detached. So, it will be this mass transfer is always a uh, semi-infinite medium because this side, this side will act as a semi-infinite medium because mass cannot penetrate to the deep of this side. So, always you have the concentration after some time is 0 because this will act as a semi-infinite side like this, this is this side. So, the concentration not be able to penetrate the whole thickness on this direction during this period over which it resides over the another fluid and then come out, okay. 
and the mass transfer and the interface is transient and this can be defined by the fixed second law and the boundary condition and initial condition at t is equal to 0 you can consider c is equal to c naught that is the fluid lighter fluid with initial concentration c naught is coming and joining and boundary condition t greater than 0 that is the that is the fluid that we are considering that is this this is the your uh, So, initially it was c is equal to c 0 and then and when it comes at x is equal to 0, this is x is equal to 0 say. So, x is equal to 0 is the surface concentration is the c i okay. and then this concentration this is your c 0 concentration this is the c 0 and x tends to infinity this direction x x tends to infinity this is always c 0 because it will not attain that. So, as this is the semi infinite media in this direction it is infinite. Okay, x x direction. So c is equal to c naught at x is equal to infinity, and another bounding x is equal to zero is the surface concentration. And initially it has everywhere. Initially it has only c naught everywhere. And after some time, that is at t at t is equal to t, you have this concentration profile. Initially you had this concentration profile. After some time t, this is, and after that the fluid detach from this uh, heavy fluid on the surface, and then it come out. Right. So, this is the way the mass transfer take place. Right. Okay. Now, Higby's penetration theory, uh, then the solution of this that is the it is a case of transient one dimensional mass transfer in a semi infinite media and all of you know it has an error function solution and the solution is given by this. And, uh, Definition of mass transfer coefficient you know from there you can get the mass transfer coefficient definition minus of d dc dx at the interface is equal to km into c i minus c naught. This is the mass flux definition in terms of mass transfer coefficient. This is the mass flux definition in terms of fixed first law of diffusion. Right. So, from there we can calculate. Now, dc dx i this thing you can this derivative you can calculate from the solution. You can calculate dc dx at the point i at the interface you can calculate and then your if you can and then equate this and from there you can have a mass transfer coefficient definition like this k m is equal to square root of d by pi t it will simply come that is if you just differentiate this equation put this and then k m expression will be like this. And you one interesting thing you can find now k m is square root of d and in case of the stagnant film you have seen there is the k m is directly proportional to the diffusivity. So, that is basically it overestimate. Um, and then time average expression will be like this basically time average how do you get because with time you see the concentration profile is changing as a result mass transfer coefficient is also changing. So, k m bar basically you can get from an integration time integration 0 to t naught and k m dt. If you do you can see the k m is a function of time function of time t is there square root of t on the school is there. So, you can have a average mass transfer coefficient definition from here. Okay. So, this is the average mass transfer coefficient from the Higgs penetration theory. Okay. Now, Denkward surface renewal theory is basically it comes movement of easy, ED, uh, there is the eddy packets as I said lighter liquid eddy packets come on the heavy fluid stay for some time and come out. So, it causes surface renewal because after some time a new surface goes sit on the heavy fluid and then it comes out and during that all mass transfer take place. Okay. So, mass transfer coefficient in terms of surface renewal factor you can write k m is equal to 2 square root of d by t naught 1 by t naught and pi also you can take into account you can write it as s. So, it is basically s is basically inverse of 1 by that is the inverse of t naught ok that is the frequency. So, the frequency at which the surface get renewed ok. So, is called the surface renewal factor and approximate range is 10 per second that is the 10 per second surface renewal is 10 in case of the mild turbulence and if you have a very violent turbulence then the surface can be renewed by 300 times that is per second 300 such eddy packets will come and see it and come out come and see it and so this is the way. And the boundary layer theory as we see the boundary layer theory here you can see mass transfer coefficient square root of d but in case of the stagnant uh, film theory mass transfer coefficient was directly proportional to do. So, basically the boundary layer theory over predicts the effect of diffusivity compared to the penetration theory. And this thing 
and it was observed that for hydrogen transfer in liquid iron when it is transferring there is a transition from boundary layer theory to penetration theory as the bath changes from stagnant to the turbulent. So, if the bath is stagnant then obviously boundary layer theory is appropriate because it consider there is a mass transfer by diffusion only ok. But if it is turbulent that is if the boundary layer is not stagnant there is some movement in it some eddies in it in that case the penetration theory more closely followed for hydrogen transfer in liquid iron it has been experimentally found. So, this is the uh, uh, about this. So, you can calculate the mass transfer coefficient most preferably by using this formula square root of d s where d is the, the molecular diffusivity s is the surface renewal factor and or you can do it by this also that is 2 of d by t naught if you know t naught t naught is the rise velocity or uh, any case in case of uh, suppose a that is the t naught is the residence time right t naught is the residence time either it is on the surface if you know that you can calculate or the frequency is the similar thing inverse of that thing or uh, that way you can calculate. So, k m you can calculate by knowing s or t naught or s and the d or uh, if it is stagnant then boundary layer thickness or otherwise also mass transfer coefficient you can calculate there are several correlations are also available uh, from there also you can get that is the. So, k m can also be got from the correlation correlations several correlations that is the serial number as a function of Reynolds number and Smith number. So, several correlations are also available in literature from there also mass transfer coefficient can be calculated ok. So, this is about the calculation of mass transfer coefficient and uh, fine this is in brief I talked about it and then uh, let us go that is the thing. So, now in conclusion we can see there is a due to high partition coefficient of impurities in steel the mass transfer of impurities is usually mass transfer control on the metal side you can take it because there are several literature and on that thing that is the slag metal impurity transfer is usually controlled by mass transfer on the metal side right. So, it has been found because it is mainly due to the high partition coefficient of the impurities. Second thing and if you can make a plot of dimensionless concentration versus uh, time and then you can get a straight line and the slope will give you the uh, volumetric mass transfer coefficient or the mass transfer rate constant whatever you call it. It is easily possible to calculate from there also mass transfer rate constant and the mass transfer rate constant is uh, again it is uh, defined as k m into a by v and now the thing is this area is very difficult to calculate. And that is I must tell about that thing this is very important point that is the k prime is equal to k m into a by v a is the total surface area of the slag metal interface think is that when slag metal transfer is taking place under the start bar then the slag droplets lot of slag droplets forms and that get entrained into the metal and then the surface area become totally different than what is the normal nominal surface area. So, and this surface area calculation become difficult under the start condition in the slag metal mass transfer this area is calculation is quite difficult. You can experimentally calculate k prime ok, but that is the overall uh, there is a mass transfer rate constant, but calculating a and uh, k m you require k m requires some model and then if you know the a or if you know the k m then you can back calculate the a that is the interfacial area. So, k m equal experimentally calculate and there is a k prime this can be experimentally calculated k m you can get it uh, for model or mass transfer correlation available in literature and then you can calculate a because a is very difficult to calculate. So, this is the situation anyway and, uh, and mass transfer coefficient may be estimated theoretically using model as I say. Uh, this thing surface renewal theory more accurately predicts the mass transfer coefficient based on surface renewal on transport of turbulent eddies that is fine. And uh, so, so main thing is that that is the slag metal mass transfer is controlled by impurity that is this controlled by mass transfer on the metal side that you can take it granted. So, only thing is that you have to calculate what is the mass transfer coefficient ok 
and uh, volumetric mass transfer coefficient you can calculate easily from the laboratory scale experiment. But uh, if you uh, and the mass transfer coefficient also can be calculated from the model and the interfacial area that is not exactly the nominal interfacial area. It is basically the lot of slag droplets is incorporated into the liquid bath under start condition and very difficult to calculate this A. So, if you know K prime and if you know KM then you can also calculate this A. Okay. Thank you very much.